Um, a lot of people think just because I was in the music industry and I made music that I should be rich. Well, I'm here to tell you that um, celebrity and fame does not always equate to money in the bank. If you know anything about groups like TLC or Tony Braxton or um, In Vogue, like there's so many, Just I'm just thinking off the top of my head, so many groups that you would think they would be rich, but in essence, they were broke. They got no money from the deals that they signed and I am ashamed to say that when I got into the music industry, I was very young and I did not have the legal representation that I should have had. So I got screwed over just like so many other artists out there. Nice and hard, say sex in it, flexing it, getting mad, affectionate, chewing it, doing it all while we're doing it. And you know, just from seeing things the way that they have been coming up in 2024, that the entertainment industry is trifling as fuck. And there are so many of these people that you do see now in the news, and so many more that you haven't even thought of yet um but yeah there's so much that's going to be coming out this year and next year and you know i hate to say it i've had my run-ins with these people and um yeah I, that's another story for another day i don't want to get too much into that but yeah i am definitely not rich I have had some fame in my life, but I am a working member of society just like everyone else. Hold up. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back. I am LaShawn Will, and today in this video, we're gonna be talking about how much money I actually made over the last year since I've been monetized by YouTube and now having over 16,000 co-stars and three quarters of a million views on my channel. Now, I'm not even gonna hold you. I know a lot of y'all are here because y'all just want to see the numbers um, like me. You just want to be nosy because I get it. I'm also curious about what other content creators are making, what their RPM is, what, you know what, I'm getting ahead of myself, but I get it. Like you want to know, can you make an actual living off of this side hustle? As for me, I want to just give you a little quick rundown my time on YouTube. I've been on the YouTube platform now for over 10 years. However, I did not always take my YouTube channel seriously. I started out doing photography and that's what I was uploading. I was never consistent about it. I had too many other things going on in my life and I really didn't put too much work into YouTube. In hindsight, I wish I had. There were times when years had gone by and I did absolutely nothing. I mean, nothing with my channel. And then the Panty Dammy happened and um, I was considering moving abroad to Portugal, but they shut down the whole entire world. And then I decided to go and buy a toy hauler which I converted into my tiny home. When I started doing that, I just decided that I was going to record everything and start putting it up on my YouTube channel. It started to gain a lot of traction and that's how I built the core of my day ones. Those of you who are my day ones, go ahead and put it in the comments. Um, but yeah, there are some of you who have been here even before that. Some of you have been here when I was doing photography, but most of that audience have already gone. I realized that when I was making my content about my tiny house, tiny home on wheels, that there were a lot of women who were interested in learning how to 
use power tools, get comfortable with DIY projects. And then also there were a lot of people in general who wanted to know about the tiny house lifestyle, like living in a tiny home. Then I got a lot of people who came to my channel when I was featured on Tiny House Giant Journey. I was featured there actually twice. Both of my tiny homes were featured on there. If you want to check those out, I will put them in the description. But that's when my channel sort of shifted. All of a sudden, my channel switched into a niche, which was the DIY home improvement interior design niche. And I love that because I am very passionate about MacGyvering things. I love taking luxury and mixing that with some repurposed goods and giving you guys some inspiration on how to have a beautiful, caring home without breaking the bank, without spending an arm and a leg or having to sell your firstborn. Having said all of that, this video is only now relevant because my channel became monetized a year ago in April of 2023. In the past year, I have been way more consistent about uploading videos to this channel on a regular basis, as well as doing my shorts and my lives. I don't wanna waste a whole lot of time during this video to explain how the monetization program works because there are thousands of videos on YouTube that can tell you that, that will break them down for you. But the long and short of it is in order to be considered for the YouTube partnership program, you have to have 4,000 watch hours. Yes, 4,000 watch hours. And you have to have at least 1,000 subscribers, um, co-stars. I call you guys my co-stars. So anyway, yes, um, that is the long and short of it. You also have to do like a short little application thing with YouTube and then once you get accepted, there's some steps that you have to follow, but it's all very simple. As long as you follow all of the guidelines, then you should not have a problem getting into the partnership program once you've reached those goals. But as I mentioned, I don't want this video to turn into that type of video. I want to show you guys my numbers, what I'm doing, what I'm making, um, and what I'm spending as well. So let's go ahead and get into it, shall we? Okay, so this is the backstage in my studio. YouTube will show you your views. This video got a little over 81,000, this one up here. And then this one was a little over 51,000. I wish this was the money, but no, this is just the views. And um, yeah, so this is how I'm able to see how my videos are doing. And I wanted to show you that first. Now let's move over into the numbers. As you can see, this is where I started to get monetized in April of 2023. These are the dollar amounts that I make per day. As you can see, it's pennies. Some days I made 80 cents, some days I made 20 cents. That day I made $29, $48, $95. The only reason I did well on that was a video that I did about America and that was the one that I show you which had the most views. So these are daily amounts and you can see that it goes up and up and up and then I moved to Mexico and boop, all of a sudden I owe money. How is that even possible, like negative $26? But as you continue to look and you see my daily rate, from the time I moved to Mexico, it just continues to plummet a little bit. And then I had a little bit of a spike. I did a good video in November, I think that was. And then, um, yeah, it just goes. And as you can see, it starts to go down and down and down. And I know you're thinking like, well, if you add all of that up, it should really be a lot more money. But Trust me, it isn't. Now, this is included in my final tally. That is for my memberships and my super thanks that I used to have on YouTube. And then this is from shorts views. As many shorts as I put out, that's as much as I've gotten from YouTube. And this is where I'm going to show you the tally from April to April. That's it. That's what I made. 
hold my fucking beer. Yep, 2,600 bucks. It's embarrassing. Let me break it down for you. Okay, so for those of you who don't understand, I get paid with AdSense. That is how I get the little bit of money that I get from YouTube. If you don't understand what AdSense is, I'll take a few minutes to break that down for you. But I get paid through something called the CPM and the RPM. The CPM is what the advertiser is willing to pay YouTube to run ads on your channel. The RPM is what I get paid from that number after YouTube has taken their cut and then they give me my cut. So that's how AdSense works kind of in a nutshell. And everybody's AdSense amount is going to be different. Some people, and even mine is going to vary depending on the day of the week or the type of video that I'm putting out. Let me explain. This video did very well, almost 80,000 views, but my CPM on that video for some reason was only $3 and change and I only made from my RPM 74 cents so about $58 on that video this other video which did a little over 80,000 I ended up getting uh, more because the CPM was 2803 my RPM was eight dollars and 64 cents so I made a little over $700 on that video alone but views don't always correlate to dollars just so you know let me break it down for you. Certain niches actually get paid a lot more. You have those niches that are based around finances, um, tech reviews, real estate, and also gossip channels. So celebrity gossip channels. All of those niches tend to do really well. And then you have niches like mine which is more lifestyle and interior design it sort of varies i'm kind of the anti-niche um i just try to keep it real and i just try to bring you guys videos that i think that you're going to be interested in seeing and also information that i want to share with you so that has probably been to my own detriment because i can tell how it varies and how it hurts my channel so I know that moving to Mexico was actually something that hurt my channel a lot because advertisers do not want to support channels that are mainly based outside of the US. So you'll see brand deals don't normally come in those videos unless an influencer is doing really, really well, then brands don't usually want to work with them if they're not in, say, the United States or Canada. They know that Americans spend probably the most money. Again, not necessarily a good thing, but um, Americans are a gluttons, so we do spend, I say, we do spend a lot of money, and therefore advertisers and brands who are mainly based in the United States want that type of audience. I have people that are from other places, but the majority of my audience is US based. Probably about a good 85% of my audience is US based. And when I moved to Mexico, it still hurt because I think the algorithm was reading it as such if that makes any sense anyway i digress and you guys know that so let's move on other ways my channel earns coin i also get a little support for this channel via my memberships which is on my coffee platform that is um the av memberships and i get some donations through Cash App, as well as PayPal, and on the coffee platform, people also make donations there as well. It does not add up to a whole lot, but it is definitely something that helps when it comes to all of my monthly expenses of trying to just run this platform and the other creative platforms that I have for you guys. So if you ever wonder what that money and those donations go towards, it goes towards bringing you guys these videos, bringing this content to you because 
I'll be honest with you, it doesn't pay for anything else. I don't even make enough to pay for groceries. What I'm spending bi-weekly on groceries, I couldn't even cover that with what I get paid from YouTube, as you can see, or from the donations. But I use the donations and all of that stuff to justify paying for all of the other things that I need for this channel. Just to let you guys know, I'll break it down for you real quick. How I spend the little bit of coins I earn. I spend $14.99 a month on Canva. And that goes towards bringing you guys those beautiful thumbnails, graphics, gear, and newsletters, and all of those things. You know, so much that I use Canva for, and that is one thing that I cannot even see myself ever giving up. I spend $29.99 a month for my website, LaShawnWill.com, for obvious reasons. I spend $20 a month on StreamYard so that I can bring you guys better lives. Speaking of which, I will be doing a Q&A live this weekend, so look out for that. I'm also able to do private video chats with my members on StreamYard, so that's another reason why I got that. I spend $108 a year for Epidemic Sound so that I can bring you these videos with amazing music. I absolutely love Epidemic Sound and I cannot imagine that I would go anywhere else for music. I spend $19 a month for YouTube Premium. Yes, I don't want to see that. <laughs> but even if you have Premium, the person still gets money. So if you don't have Premium, Watch those ads for me, please, or at least a good 30 seconds of them. Thank you. I spend $10 a month for vidIQ, which is an extension for my YouTube channel, and that is only because I just reduced it. For probably two years, I had vidIQ, and I was spending $49.99, so $50 a month, but it is a helpful tool. I would recommend if you're going to have a channel that you do get vidIQ, but I don't think I need all of the things that they offer for $49.99, so I just went ahead and reduced it down to $10 a month because I think I know enough now. I spend $29.99 a month for Adobe Suite, and that is so that I can bring you guys the videos that you actually watch, just like this one. I spent $250 a year for Motion Array. Motion Array gives you music, but also B-roll and graphics and transitions, things like that. But uh, first of all, Canva stepped up their game, and so I started using Canva more. And then the music from Motion Array always gets flagged through YouTube. If you've ever seen me bitch and complain about my videos and the music, it's because the music was through Motion Array. So I would never use them again, just a side note. I spend $14.99 a year for InShot, and that is a video editing app that I use on my phone. So when I'm doing my shorts and my reels when I was on Instagram, um, that's what I use InShot for and I love it. So if you're looking for a quick way to edit videos on your phone, I would definitely recommend InShot. I pay $6 a month for keywords everywhere and that is so that I can do my SEO marketing and research. I pay fees to Coffee and PayPal and so many other entities simply because I'm on their platforms, but it's more of a pay as you go type of thing. I also run ads and my ad budget is about $80 to $100 a month. And I'm still deciding whether or not I want to do that but I know that it's gonna go up because I'm gonna be running ads on my Etsy as well. So I have to figure out what I'm gonna do as far as my ad budget goes. I may have left something out, but as far as I can tell you, it is a lot. And 
I don't even really want to think about it or add it up. So if you want to add it all up, knock yourself the fuck out. I am not interested because the number I know will shock me. I just go ahead and pay for it. Most of those um, apps that I have or things, they just come out automatically. So I don't really pay attention to it. Um, I do know that there is a set amount that I allot for all of these expenses and you know it's starting to get tight it, it's definitely starting to get a little bit tight I won't dwell on that in this video but I just want to let you know just because I am a triple platinum recording artist does not mean that I don't have to work and I don't have to earn money another way that I'm supposed to be earning money is through my Amazon I am an Amazon influencer and I do have the ability to earn money there but Amazon also has a threshold and I have not even met that threshold yet so I have not gotten any money from Amazon um, definitely if you want to see some numbers from Amazon then go ahead and use my link you can shop through Amazon just go in through my link whatever you have to purchase purchase it but it's more of like a finder's fee because I'm the one who sent you there. You get it? So you don't even have to buy what I have in my catalogs, but I'm here to tell you, I took a lot of time creating some really nice catalogs for you guys. So make sure you get over to my Amazon store and check out the shops. You might find something that you like, okay? Why in the world do you do this shit? Now all things considered, Although I did not make a lot of money being on this platform, what I did get from YouTube is priceless. I have gained a community of co-stars who trust me and get value out of the content that I bring to them. And that makes me feel good about myself. It don't pay my bills. Not even close. But it feels good. <laughs> we have laughed together, we have cried together. We have educated one another, especially down in the comments. So make sure if you have a comment, leave it. And know that when you do leave these comments and the likes, it helps the channel. Even if you cannot do anything to donate to the channel, if you get anything out of it, then leave a smiley face, leave you know a thumbs up, anything, any type of interaction with my videos tells the algorithm that people are interested in seeing what I am dishing out like pretty much you picking up what I'm throwing down I have also built a more personal group over on my coffee platform with my members who are over there and I'm really grateful for that. I'm grateful that I have been able to tighten up my skills and learn more about being a videographer. Although I was a photographer before all of this, um, I wasn't a videographer. And now I would consider myself a videographer as well as an editor. Being a content creator is a lot of work. Ultimately, I am hopeful that I'll be able to continue to grow this channel as well as all of the other creative outlets that I do have, such as my website, my coffee platform, my Etsy, my Amazon. Um, there's a lot that you know I do because I am a creative and some people would say, why would you do all of that and you're making no money doing it? Well, it's sort of like putting money in the bank like a savings account i never know which one of my videos are going to hit i never know which one might go viral but i am hoping that at some point things will get a little bit more consistent and then i can actually say that i am a full-time content creator right now i'm a content creator but even though i do the work full-time more than full-time um, I'm not getting paid for this. It, you've seen my numbers and, and I've broken it all down for you. This is not something that I would say is for the faint at heart. If you need to make money, then definitely, definitely do not quit your day job. Do this until you can see some consistency because the platform does change a lot. The algorithm changes a lot. What it's looking for from you or from your audience 
can vary from week to week, month to month, day to day. Please like and subscribe. I know that there's so many of you that wish you could do so much more for the channel. The sun is starting to go down. So if you notice that the light is changing, it's because the sun is starting to go down. But anyway, um, I know that there's so many of you who wish you can do more and I get it. It's hard out there. Times are hard on the boulevard as we used to say. Um, but if you can do anything to support me, support the channel, then great. I love it. But if you can only leave a thumbs up and a comment, some sort of emoji that helps out a lot, a great deal, way more than you even know. So thank you so much for your support, whether it be interacting with the video, sharing it, liking it, leaving comments, or monetarily, or both. Thank you so much. Don't forget that I'm going live this weekend. So if you have some questions that I didn't answer in this video, or any other video for that matter, please put those questions in the comments or go over to my coffee and send me a private message if that's something that you wanna do. You can do that. You don't have to be a member to send me a message, okay? Just so you know. I wanna add those questions to the live, so make sure that you go ahead and do that. I definitely wanna hear from you guys and I'll see you this weekend. I love you. Hey guys, if you haven't hit that like button, do it now and go ahead and check out this video for me. You can have yourself a nice little sofa vacation on me free of charge and it will help out the channel a whole lot. Thank you. I love you. Bye.